Bhakti, the chief executive officer of a major pharmaceutical company, just stated that this is trending towards endemic, which basically to amateurs like me says all clear. Are we all clear on COVID? Absolutely not all clear. Absolutely not an endemic. Okay, well, you, that's a, it's radio and TV, Bhakti. You got to give a longer answer because I don't have enough <laughs> good questions. If it's not endemic, <laughs> what is it? The leader of New Zealand came out overnight and said, you know, we still have a challenge here and a problem. We all know each and every story. How far are we from what the CEO of AstraZeneca was talking about? So we're still in the midst of a pandemic, which means we still don't quite know how to like overcome the current burden of disease from the from the virus. Um, there are still daily deaths. There are still daily resource limitations. Um, we have some strategies that we know to be effective, such as social distancing, vaccinating, but that has proven to be not enough. Also, the virus will continue to evolve. Um, we don't know when that's going to happen. We've been very fortunate so far. It's been a couple of months since Delta emerged. Um, but that's something to look out for. We, I'm, I'm a little bit concerned as I look at the numbers, Dr. Hansadi. It looks like even in areas where there's high vaccination rates, you're seeing surges in the number of cases. I'm thinking of South Korea in particular, with 79% of the adult population with both shots of vaccine, and yet you're seeing the highest number of cases diagnosed going back since the start of the pandemic. Does this indicate that the vaccines are less effective than we thought they were? So I don't think it indicates that the vaccines are less effective. Remember, testing is also going up. We're more likely to test routinely prior to big events, um, prior to going to work in many situations. Um, mortality hasn't gone up. Hospitalizations are lagging behind. So vaccines are definitely effective. I think human behavior plays a big part in this virus. And what we're seeing in the North and the Midwest is that it is getting colder. People are going indoors. People are feeling more confident because they're vaccinated and their behavior has changed. And all of that together is leading to these surges. How concerning is that for a place like Detroit, Michigan, where you can see that the percent of cases, it's now about 600 uh, per 100,000 individuals getting diagnosed with COVID. And you're seeing the people in the ICUs, about 90% of them have not been vaccinated. How concerning is this that we're seeing the surge right ahead of the winter months, right ahead of Thanksgiving, right ahead of when everyone gets into a small room and breathes on each other. Absolutely. So the concern is that the number of cases is perhaps the tip of the iceberg, and which means that a large number of patients will still have asymptomatic infection. With vaccinated individuals, the iceberg has gone from this to this, which means there's a higher proportion of asymptomatic individuals because people are not, due to vaccines, you're not mounting the symptoms or getting as sick. Um, the challenge is, is that, say, if you were to travel to Michigan for the holidays, then the airports, um, staying at a hotel, there is a, all of these are opportunities for getting sick. Dr. Hansati, I feel like I've asked this question many times throughout the pandemic, and each time it's proven that, in fact, there aren't enough people with natural immunity or not enough people who are vaccinated in order for the case curve to be prohibited from climbing dramatically upward. Are we getting closer, though, to that point? Yes, I think our surges would have been much higher, given the fact that children are in schools, workers resumed as normal for many individuals, and people are traveling again, taking vacations again. I think if the vaccines, some inherent immunity, um, we would have had much higher surges um, and would have been right where we were six months ago.